she said she, when she got outside, she just felt something was looking at her. And she turned around and saw this being in a tree in the tree she said it was about four feet tall and it was glowing and it just had like dark eyes and it was staring at her it was just really low and then it just started taking off and i got back in my car and i was kind of freaked out i just felt really weird and i was like i don't think that was a plane and i've got all those ufo experiences up there that you guys can show some of those that i've got up there Yeah, and like actually, um, so James, who we know, um, who owns the ranch at East SETI, the one I was telling you about, and I've got all those UFO experiences up there that you guys can show some of those that I've got up there, you know, right. like showing you guys, you know, I mean, it was taken by me, it was legit like what we saw, you know. Roll that beautiful UFO footage. Got it. Oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, the clouds? Yeah. It could be a space station. No, no, no. The space station goes the other way. It's not. Rob. It usually crosses the it usually is over look, here. Look at it through the night vision, Rob. Here, I'll give it to you. No, that's right. I want to share the area. Okay. Here, it comes out over here. Right now. Thank you. Oh, you see, it didn't even go behind the cloud when it went down. Thank you so much. Got it. <laughs> it's it's not. You can tell. It's not. That's the space station. That's right. Can I have those after you're done? Thank you. Roy, can I have the dog bite after you? I will give you the dog bite. Oh, And these are definitely not planes because none of the planes f have this flight path. The only ones that... Yep, I heard that, James. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, there's two right in a row. Yeah. There's another one right here. It just They just cross paths. Yeah. Wow, that's nuts. Right there. Right here. Oh, right there. Dude, it just powered up. Woo! Okay, do you guys see the, the one south of it? Like, mm -hmm. right there? Yeah, this one, this one. It's, it's just powered up again. Okay, I'm recording. Oh. Oh, it is a craft. Oh, wow. Yep, I see it. I got it. I'm recording it. That's a craft. Whoa, one fell but below it. <laughs> That's a craft. Don't aim at it. Whoa, one fell but below it. You're a beautiful ship, friends. I don't know. Are you filming it? Yeah, I'm filming it. What the heck? What, what that is not the space no, it's not. I'm telling you, the space station came by already. No, that's a ship. My Vega. I got it. Big as Vega. Wow, Dude, that is huge, man. Ah. Sorry, I had to do that. That the, that thing is massive. Wow. I have to edit this one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I got it. Well, I think it's I think it just shot out something. Whoa, I just 
I just caught something on camera that it was either a shooting star or an actual ship. I got that on video. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I did. No, I said I got it. I got it. <laughs> well, look at this thing. It's like dimming out. It's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Cool. It's going. It's going. It's going pretty. F oh, look. Yeah, just. Look at it. It's going nuts. It just changed directions before. Yeah, it a actually, it might. It might be going behind a cloud though. No, there's no cloud there. Dude, that cloud is the Milky Way, man. That's the Milky Way. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's the way that is Milky. Milky it's also. How is that called the Milky Way if we live in the Milky Way? Apparently. You just <laughs> sit on that one for the rest of the night and let Whoa. it come to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those are the questions yeah. you ask. That's the Milky Way. But how, is that, how is that specifically the Milky Way? Because we're looking at us? the other end of the Milky Way. We're looking at it from within it. And we're back. <laughs> Good. Yeah, so, some of this, so you know, what we're looking at is, is like different aspects of kind of some of the things I caught. Like as you can see, you can see like little circle like lights going around. Right. That was like the know, color changing thing I was talking yeah. about earlier. Right. Well, yeah, the ones that are like ejected one. More the ones like phasing in and phasing out. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, and then like, like the power ups right, that we're yeah. seeing, you know. The one that so, shot off, that is weird. It's like what weird. the hell is it firing? Yeah, like, I have no idea, you know. And so James like has so much stuff and the mountain itself is super crazy because um, that's one of the things about the mountain. You will start seeing these lights on the mountain and they're orange lights, really super bright. And we've been to different parts of the mountain, like driving up there and looking at it and everything. So you can, you're not, a, there's, you can, you can actually hike up the mountain, but you have to go on the side. And one of the area where we're seeing the lights is just flat. You cannot climb that part of the mountain. I mean, you would have to be in a super experienced climber and it's illegal. And actually the Native Americans own the other half of the mountain. So you can't mm. even go on That's that side of the mountain because they own that side. And James is like, he made friends with the local natives. And he says he's been, they've, they've allowed him to go up in those area, that area of the mountain. So that's what's super interesting. So, and the lights will interact with like, sometimes, you know, you shine a light and then you'll see like a big bright light on the mountain. And it's like, you don't know, you know, it's like, this is crazy. Like, where did this come from? And it's not campers because the lights won't appear very long. They're not like a fire where someone right. lights a fire, you're going to see it. And like I said, this is the area of the mountain where you can't, you go. just can't go. And it's the same area all the time is where we see these lights, you know? And, um, John Vivanco said one time he went over there and he didn't see the light and they were seeing it back at the East SETI. So he's like, you know, some weird things. Definitely there are campers, you know, and you, you'll, yeah. but you'll notice that because, you know, the lights just shine and they're just walking and, and whatever. This is like a, a usually typically an orange light that's very bright, like super bright, hmm. like unusual bright. You know, I can't, I can't say for certain, but I do know that people have seen Bigfoot there. Um, the interesting thing was that James was telling me we're all there, and he said that, he said, there's two smells that, a, that, that will go with, like, a Bigfoot. And he's like, it will either be, um, if you smell, like, a really bad odor, it means that they don't want you around. You know, you should probably go. He said the other smell is, like, a combination of jasmine flower and what he described as like a birthday cake so if you smell that that's like a sweet smell and they're kind of inviting you in so um the next night uh, a couple of us decided to kind of go out and there's this one tree this really big tree in this in this property actually this yeah it's kind of in this property that supposedly people have seen some some activity around there. So we're, it was like late at night. We decided to go out there, and we get to the area. Like I just start smelling jasmine, and it didn't really hit me. I'm like, this is weird. I'm smelling jasmine, and then there's there's no flowers around or anything else. 
Um, and then all of a sudden, I, I just smell this, like, the best way I can possibly to smell it is, like, birthday cake. I'm like, this is really weird. I was like, and I'm asking everybody, I'm, I'm like, are you guys smelling this or is it just me? And everyone's like, no, I smell it too. And I was like, this is so crazy. This is exactly what James is talking about. And then they were like, well, people said they've seen Bigfoot around this big tree, you know? So it was super interesting. James kind of described, I mean, from his understanding, he thought it might be some kind of like, I don't know, portal or something. Where doorway. Kind of doorway, you know. That's like something where the veil, like the crossover there. between yeah, you know, whatever so, realm and there. But I definitely could smell it. So, um, and I was telling uh, a couple people this, and they're like, man, I've smelled that before in the forest, and I it didn't really hit me. I'm like, this is a weird smell. It smells really nice, though. But they didn't really know what it was. And I was like, well, supposedly, you know, that's what I heard. I can't really, you know, say for certain, but. So I saw, I saw, like, I also had seen something else yet interesting we were out there yesterday and i didn't really say anything because i didn't really put a lot of thought to it but now like the more i think about it the more like i'm like kind of like wondering what it was because i'm like i don't see how this could have naturally happened by itself but it was like a really tiny thing like right before we left i started to like walk down the path a little bit further than everybody else and there was a spot where i stopped and it was like right on the side of the path there was just like what at first looked like just like a clump of leaves hmm. but then the closer i looked at it it had been and i don't even know how many were there just like leaves and they're just stacked and stacked and stacked and stacked and stacked and stacked and stacked and, stacked. and like they kind of fallen over so they weren't clumped they were just stacked and stacked and like the whole thing the whole thing if i would set it back up probably would have been about this tall Wow. And like I said, they were clumped. They were perfectly like. That's super crazy. And we were like, I, I mean, like, we were pretty deep weird. into the woods. We, we were, well, when we, I was like, this we is got to the know. area, and I was like, this is the area that we need to get. Because we like went pretty deep it. into the woods. Yeah. Until, like, right. And then the and more like, I thought about it, I was like, how would that even? That's crazy. And there was like mud, like where it was laying too. So it was almost like they were even like. Yeah. Caked together. Um, it was yeah. just, it was really weird. And I don't even know why, like. <laughs> if we had more time, I would say we should probably, you know, we could kind of go back in that area continuously for like three or four days in a row. Guarantee you we would start seeing some what things going on. There's a place near us where I have an, I have an idea for us o to go Ohio? to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a park, not too, kind of on the outskirts of Columbus, but apparently it had a Bigfoot sighting. Interesting. So, um, we're going to be going there and. Taking, also, by the taking, way, I have a bottle of jasmine yep. that I'm going to taking bring. taking some of the so techniques I'll let you that we've know learned. How that goes. <laughs> taking some of the techniques we've learned this weekend and kind of putting it towards you know yeah, uh, yeah. some place closer to home. But there's also like places outside of Columbus, like an hour away, that have lots of crazy weird stuff. I mean, well, definitely. I mean, well, then you have Wright Patterson. I mean, oh, Ohio is one of the like weirdest. An hour away, right? Yeah, I mean, you're living <laughs> in like one of the most haunted areas in the United yeah. States, and we live in like the most haunted state in the well, Yeah, yeah. It's like Ohio is just a... so. Yeah, like one one of the times I was. Uh, oh, so... we're also you know only fifteen minutes away from Battelle. Battelle. Yeah. What's Battelle? On uh, near on campus, um, it's Battelle Institute. It's where they like do all the chemical testing and oh, all. Yeah, that's right. Well, and, yeah, OSU. There's so many weird things. Well, going on what, at the, oh yeah, right. But yeah, at, I've heard stuff. Uh, I was talking to a police officer. Yeah. And he was telling me like, all this crazy stuff that like is going on there, and um, I had a f friend who actually went there to do some of their wiring because he was a technician. And he was telling me all this crazy stuff, like all, all like any virus you can possibly think of that have it in vials. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, that. like they have, and probably not, I don't think like smallpox or anything, nothing like, but it was like, you know, oh, oh, there's AIDS, HIV, you know, syphilis, and it was just like all this other crap that was like, in vials really in weird. Vitel. Yeah. As he was. Columbus is a lot of weird things going on. Yeah, there. and you know, the police officer, he's like, oh, dude, there's like way more crazier stuff than like even what you think is yeah, even going yeah. on so, there. Well, I mean, and I, like, I, like I said... I and again, this is 15 minutes away from my house. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of things that, yeah, and some things I don't want to quite get into, but definitely related to that whole area. Because right. you know, I lived in that area for a while, and it was always weird stuff. You grew up when you lived in that area. You were born. Well, I was born there, but I mean, I lived on there, campus for a while, yeah, that's, right? Right. That's, that's what I mean. And, um, and like I said, you have Wright Patterson's Air Force Base because 
What's well, so special about Wright Patterson? So whatever supposedly happened in Area 51 with the crash was moved to Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton. In Dayton, Ohio. Which so, we've been to. Which we've been to. So, <laughs> so you have like the museum that's over, right. right? But then you have like the the restricted area, area. of Wright, Wright Patterson Air Force Base. So which is still you act, know I very can, I can see that because I've heard that um, you know I've heard that of theory of the current Area 51 like is just like a decoy and they basically like they make it seem busy like there's something going on there and they've heard that i've best with yeah. from what i've heard I, I like actually, is that that's what a lot of people think is nothing's there mm -hmm. but they make it seem like it is and they want you to think that 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 could be i i don't really know personally i i, I mean i don't that, know for sure that's just a theory yeah, i've heard i mean view there's a part there is a for a while you could look on google maps right. and you can actually find <laughs> It's like triangular craft that was like parked, like this like area because you can find tanks and no, stuff like right. that. But I, I don't know. I might mean, have heard that it was like they develop stuff with my technology, personal but I don't, I don't theory know. about Area Fifty One. Mm -hmm. My personal theory would be that there is some stuff there, but it's nothing of note. That, Anything yeah, that is of be, note is no idea. longer there. It would be like the remains of stuff that Which that's now they've played like, somewhere else, right? Or something like that. And it's so, like it probably if there was a crash, mm -hmm. when it, when it crashed, if it crashed, they took it there. Yeah, they ripped everything out of it and then left whatever of the carcass is still there, and well, all the other parts have gone. Well, all yeah, the, and that, all the like, more important parts are are gone, gone. Yeah, and that's why, like, growing up in and especially you know in Ohio area, I mean, that was the stuff that we would always talk about. You know, it's like yeah. that. That's supposedly what happened. I so I was driving one night. So when I like after I became like from 16, 17, um, and I really started driving, I would take these like, I just drive at night. I would just get in my car and just drive in these back roads because it was really like Dude, a, that's all there is like to a do. meditation for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed. I mean, it. once I you got down, once car. you got out of Hilliard and you're driving kind of off of like Alton Darby and going into it was just into the woods, pure the, I mean, farmland as far as you can. It see. was great because you actually see the sky and yeah, yeah. Like, so that's yeah. Exactly we all would do that. I mean, we, we would right, all just go back there and like yeah. I mean, in fact, our Friday, like sometimes our Friday nights was like, hey, let's all drive in the car and Dude, tell ghost stories. We would, we would nights. fill up our car, like the car on Friday, like the same thing. We'd fill up the car with gasoline. Yeah. And then by the time we got back, like the car would almost be empty. Yeah, because we just <laughs> drove around so much. So I started just doing that one night. And there was this, um, it was like there was a plane and I was like, dude, this plane is flying super low, like really, really, really low. And in fact, it was so low that I, I even stopped my car and got out and looked at it. And I just remember seeing these lights and I'm like, it doesn't really quite look like a plane. And, and I, it wasn't really registering to me. You know, I'm just like this, this plane you is You never told low. me the story. Yeah. Cause, cause like, you know. I can't say for certain. I mean, it could have been, you know, one of a smaller plane or whatever, but it was just really low. And then it just started taking off. And I got back in my car and I was kind of freaked out. I just felt really weird. And I was like, I don't think that was a plane. Like, I, I really don't think so. And that's why I don't really tell the story too much because it's like, I can't say for certain that it wasn't a plane, but there's there there's no airstrip in that area right no, not not in that area where where, where we lived um there's one in dublin there was like right. a small there might be one there there might one. be something back there now because that entire maybe area now but this so is developed. back in like 96 or something like that there was nothing back there and after i really started thinking about it i was like dude i seriously think that was like a ufo like it, it literally flew right over my car so I'm pretty certain it was, but I, like I said, I can't say for all certainty, but I mean, with all the crazy things that I experienced, you know, it wouldn't right. surprise me. Right. And I'm not saying like alien UFO, like, one, well, actually now that we're on this topic, like another video I can show you guys, one of my friends took this and actually you didn't end up seeing this, but Jordan did. And she's filming this like little orb thing and it's not really moving. She's filming with her eye her phone and it's like really crappy and she can't hold it still. So she just stops filming it because she only got like 10 seconds because she just couldn't do much. But when she looked at the footage later, she, she didn't realize it, but she got this triangular, perfect triangular craft that was like right through the tree line. And it was just like chilling there with three lights on it. 
she didn't even notice it was there. That's so crazy. Yeah, I'll show mm -hmm. you the footage yeah. later. And um, so she called, like, she texted me right away. She's like, Ben, you're not going to believe this. Like, I, I don't, like, you're the only person I want to show this to right now. Like, I just trust you guys. And, like, here it is. Like, everyone's been asking me for this footage, but I don't want anyone to have it right now. So, has other people like, gotten it now? This is crazy. Sure. What? Has other people gotten it now? Well, I probably, but she still never gave it to anybody. Like, oh. really, it was just her, you know? And, um, and so what we generally understand is that these triangular craft are what's called TR3Bs. And you can actually find um, uh, blueprints that are, what I want to say, like patent designs for these things. And it's a hovercraft, isn't it? Essentially, yeah. That's kind of what they are. And so these things, from, from what we understand, are like military um, planes or like craft i guess you could say more like ufo military craft so like a lot of these things like the tic tac ufo thing that came out and all this stuff a lot of this like you know not necessarily our aliens these could actually be like top like black projects right. you know like like all of this came out with a tip saying like you know the government spent like you know millions or close to a billion dollars or something on these black projects so these are kind of some of the things that, that, that could potentially be there, but, you know, it's hard to say. But anyway, point is, is that you have Wright-Patterson Air Force Base over there probably doing some weird stuff. And then, you know. But here's also, like, my question, too, for stuff like mm -hmm. that. When you see stuff like that, if it is something that, like, our military made, where did we get the technology? Like, that's the question. That's always so my that's question. The like, question. That's where not we get our technology? technology. Exactly. So that's what I fully believe, too. Um completely I had uh, to come from somewhere I was talking to uh Ralph does painting the unexplained and he was asking me like my thoughts on UFOs and I was like look man I I I have never seen one yeah no I, it's like everyone I know is like some kind of weird experience with the UFOs I'm like the only person I'm like dude I've never seen one I've never seen um seen footage but I've never me personally looked in the sky and seen a UFO I've seen lots of other weird shit in the sky but I've never seen a UFO but he was like, well, do you believe in aliens? And I pulled my cell phone out. I was like, where do you think this came from? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, That's not hilarious. only do I think that, um, I mean, this is my personal belief, whatever. I was like, not only do I think we've been visited or, you know, whatever. I'm like, I think this technology came from them. And I also think they're among us. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's like, okay, so look, look at our history just in the last hundred years. So this is right? always my defense. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. So we have the industrial revolution that happened in the 1900s, you know, and then we have all this stuff that's going on. And then it was really like, you have the 1960s where they start making like the computer chip first really came, like the chip for a computer started getting made and you have like calculators then that came out. And then like all, all of a sudden it's just like, boom, it was just super fast. You know, we went from, like... A computer the size of this room to a microchip? Yeah, like, literally, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, and think about how... I mean, if you think about it this way, your iPhone is 10 times more advanced than what we were flying in, like, World... Like, 100,000 times more advanced than what they were flying in World War II. The right. planes, right? Like, the technology that, that is in our pocket is even more advanced than the airplanes that were flying in 1970. Right. And it's like, and if you think about it this way, we're still flying in airplanes that our great, great, great grandfathers flew in, you know, it's like airplanes haven't changed at all. And yet it's like, look how fast, I mean, we have quantum computers now that they've created that literally compute. They literally say this, they compute in a different dimension because it's so fast. So it's like how quantum computers work. Imagine like a normal computer is trying to break, like you're trying to hack a password, right? It can only enter a password one at a time, but it's doing it as fast as yeah. possible. Quantum computer takes all the possible combinations of that password, puts it all at the same time, and then finds the one that works. So it's, it's like instant. And that's right. why they're so freaky because they, they can do this. Yeah, you know? because I remember before like watching the software you're talking about where they put it in one at a time. Like, I've watched that software before, yeah, yeah. and, like, learning about that, like, being told, like, how long that can take before it'll find it, and, like, knowing how long that can take, like, you can turn it on the next day, come back to it 24 hours later, it's still not found it. 
but like so that compared to boom it's right there like yeah. that's well, and, that, and that's why I think that a lot of, like, when I'm getting back to the airplanes, like, why are we still flying in the same airplanes? Because it's like, they probably do have this technology, right? But it's like... It's too obvious. It's too obvious yeah, if so you put like, it out there. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of it is kind of, like, uh, you know, hidden. Mm -hmm. So this is a really fascinating story. So um, I'm not going to say his name, but I'm friends with a drummer who's, a, who's actually in a famous band if I mentioned the band you guys are like oh yeah I know that band you know so they were playing a show in LA and um this guy came up to him and said uh I'm a huge fan of your guys' band I've been a fan for like like all my life and uh I am the lead the the, the I am the chief chef at SpaceX and I'm like he's like I prepare Elon's food and he's like, would you like a private tour of SpaceX? And they're like, sure, you know? And Why would you not want yeah. that? So he, yeah, I wouldn't so, say no. So um, they're not allowed to give uh, tours, but he's like, I just love you guys so much that, you know, he's like, I've listened to you guys. You've like, basically it's like, for me, it's like, you are my life. Like I want, I no. want to give you something in return, you know? So he takes him through SpaceX and, he, and so he called, like my friend calls me on the phone. He's like, Ben, you're not going to believe this. He told me three things and I keep, for the life of me, I need to call him back. And I'm, I'm trying to remember the first two things that he told me. But the craziest thing he said, he said they walked in this room and they had steel, like two pieces of steel that they're welding shut together. They're using only sound waves to weld steel. That's it. Just well, sound that's waves. Not us. Wow. Yeah. He, his mind was blown. He's like, he called me and he's like, you're not going to believe what I said. How the, f how does that work? Yeah. That how does mean? that work? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm sitting here with this yeah. expression on my face yeah. as I'm trying to like so if you process think, but, how. Also, if you think about it, when we, when we like, if think about it, someone singing that can break glass, right? Can it be used the other way around? Can you use sound waves to destroy things? Well, I mean, you are using sound waves to destroy the, the glass. Yeah. So, I mean, on a larger scale, right? So, like, some, I don't know. I'm just bringing this up as a question more than anything else. But, but anyway, getting back to that, he was, he was like, they are doing things that, like, we, it's like, imagine this technology exists, but, you know, it's, it's just, it's hard now because it's like, we know, you know, if, if it's like only these private companies, are doing these things so it's like you know well, they're the money imagine if this was really like from from people i've talked to and from things i personally have seen and everything else it's like man if this it's like this is why i kind of laugh at you know it's like how, how let me say this in a different way it's like knowing that this stuff is out there it's like these people can change the world but instead, they just want to be the first ones to space. Right. <laughs> not not the first ones to space. They want to be the first one amongst three people to be the first ones. Like, yeah. people have been to space already. They want to just be the ones who, for whatever but, reason... But it's like, you know, we're, we're... So we're talking about phones. We're talking all these things that, you know, it's like our phones are so advanced. Yet, think of our power grids that we use and everything else, right? It's like, it's like it, this is why I, I get, you know, kind of frustrated with... with all these things, even even like when it comes to solar power, it's like, dude, it's like we have the technology to generate. I mean, if you look at the sun, if we could really truly, which I'm sure we could easily harness the energy of the sun, but there's no money in it. I know. All these companies right. would go out of business because it's free energy. That's like the same thing. Reason why there's no cure for you know all AIDS or HIV or something because like that there's because there's no money in the cure. cure. And it's like, and it's, nobody it's wants, over. nobody wants to just be named for the greatness of it anymore. Like how it yeah. used to be, it was yeah. like people used to make stuff, you know, like the, um, cure for like polio or whatever yeah. else. It was like, people would do it just for the greatness of science. Trust right? me. I mean, I get it. I get it being somebody mm. who's lived their entire life with something that with all the technology we have, researchers don't even know what causes it. Right. And I'm like, how, how do you, cause yeah. I see all these things and I'm like, yeah. but how do you not? even can't even well fund doctors enough to figure out what's causing this well, the, and it's not like uh, exactly it's not like anything that i don't feel like we shouldn't be able to 
I have a hard Pinpoint. time. One of the biggest, um, Medical industry. one of the biggest uh, breast cancer foundations, you know which one I'm talking about, mm -hmm. I'm sure. The bigger, one of the biggest ones. Yeah, you don't have to yeah I'm not going to mention names. I'm just going to say one of the biggest ones. Um, they're, all the proceeds they get, I think like less than 3% goes to the cause of the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's why like, like, like what the heck's the point if you're not even looking what what causes it like do you... this is why too like I when I go places and you know like you go to like the pharmacy or something or even like the grocery store sometimes like you go to check out and then there's that prompt on the ATM machine where you pay yeah. like would you would like to donate would you like to round up for someone so I, I'm like always like no because I don't know what you're doing with my, my money, money. Right. and I would if I'm gonna donate my money to something I'm going to research and find something where they're actually gonna do what they say yeah. I'm not gonna give it to somebody who's we've, not gonna we've profit who just wants to profit off of it exactly and we've really dived deep into a lot of these things and I think we went a little too far at some time so we, kind of, <laughs> we, like, we need to pull back because this gets kind of scary but that's it's exactly it you know you just need to ask yourself like yeah we're just follow the trail you know, yeah. you, you want to start looking into something. It's like, well, first start with the money. That's all you need to start with. And you kind of see a pattern, you know, and where everything goes. And you start seeing like, oh, this person donated this. But then that person, this is owned by this person. And that person also owns this. And it's like, wait a minute, it just comes back to the same person. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. It's like legal mo money laundering is kind of how I look at it. I a lot like of how things. we've like in this whole episode. <laughs> Ghost, shadow people, mystery Indian puppet Dude, thing. I um, get that Bigfoot, so much. Every aliens, time I do an interview. I say aliens, but we went back well, to aliens. I mean, um, and now, an like, it's like it's, yeah, how messed up our technology is. Yeah. Well, we, 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 we interviewed Chris, uh, our friend Christina. This is back in the audio days before we went to video. And we're talking about, um, you know, a shadow figure hanging out over her bed. And then we went to a story with, like, um, she woke up one morning and found little kid's handprints all over her car. Oh, I forgot her, about after that. After her car we died in the forest. That, man. That, that so it's like, we, we're we used to like our stories. Like people just, cause place, if we're just, yeah. because it's, we never really have like a plan. We're just like, tell us some, like, tell us some tell stuff. Tell us your like, weird stuff. We want to know. Yeah. Because, I mean, our whole thing is really just, we want to, it's almost like it was kind of a conversation you have with your friends. You just sit down and start talking about weird stuff and just kind of let the, I mean, and it really is to what we kind of have always put out, which is, you know, it's it's just a safe place. Yeah, like, right. not you know, people no. don't always feel comfortable talking about stuff. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, it's, it's like, like it's I like mean, we're gonna hell, sit down even, and we'll talk to you, and yeah. if you know, we're not gonna judge you. Well, that's like, why you can say I'm, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wanted you to bring up like the the puppet things. I knew I was like, you never yeah, mentioned that story because I'm probably the only few it, people yeah. on the planet who even know that story. Yeah, yeah that's, that's so it's one like, of the ones I never even had any any desire to tell. But there's so many other stories that I still haven't told that are. Well, we're weird. gonna like we're gonna end this episode with one more story. So okay, um, there's one story I wanted to bring up and it involved both of us. Okay, and it was a night. I don't know. It was late at night. We were walking in a forest um, near campus. I've never told the story on on our show, and I don't think you've ever told your story on this. So it's a really good story to tell because we're both there. And it was you, me, and like three of our other friends. And I we were there's a bike path in Columbus that goes pretty much the entire length of columbus mm -hmm. do you know what story i'm talking about I, I, vaguely I, just, I don't really remember what happened i just remember like that was where you hurt your knee no that was different that was a different that was different okay, that was different is, no, we were all just hanging out still, then i'm not sure okay okay so, yeah, so we're all this. so we're all walking uh-huh and because we would go on that bike path all night because you know usually we'd be smoking pot or smoking cigarettes or whatever <laughs> but um so I remember one time, like we were walking, we went and walked forever, and then we walked. We were walking back, and how we had to get back to where we were originally came from was, we had to cut through the, the woods, go through a tunnel, go underneath the freeway, get to the other side where there was like a small little area where these skaters like made it into a little skate park, walk through like more woods, and then to the main street to get back to the main road we were trying to go. To. Dude, so this, I do not remember this. Oh, did know. we? Did we go in the tunnel? We did. We used to go all the time. 
We used to ride our bikes. We remember we would, we would ride our bikes and we'd have to walk our bikes underneath the tunnel to get okay. to the other side. So anyway, we're on a, we're on this path, and I can't believe you don't remember this. But uh, we were walking back, and everyone was kind of tired, so we decided to take a break before we had to go through the tunnel and make our long way back. So we stopped. I was I walked away on my own because I something was felt weird, and I was like, "There's something back there. I'm just gonna kind of walk over here." That was your first. Mistake. Yeah, that was my first mistake. Cause I went alone. <laughs> um, me personally, this is the first time I've ever actually physically seen something other than it was not a shadow. You you, you were missing, right? We were looking. Yes. For you? Okay. Just, you guys. Yeah, you oh, dude, and you were running back like. Freaked so out. what happened to me was I do remember this. Okay, now. yeah. Okay, so I walked away and I stopped something there was this tree and I stopped right in front of this tree and I was just staring at this tree and I'm like, there's something really bad, like really, really bad here. And I felt something up coming up because you guys were behind, so I was walking away from you. Mm -hmm. And I stopped here and I was like, I need to leave and go back to them, like now. And I turn around and this full like, as like apparition charges and goes through me. <laughs> like this white ghostly figure, its face is like, like, like old mouth open, eyes wide, like black eyes, charges, goes straight through me. And that's when I ran back to you guys. I do remember, I remember you saying that. And then I, wow. I was like, I was like, dude, something's crazy. And then um, our friend was sitting on a bench. And he stood up and he was oh, like, dude, dude he did? like sat next to him. Well, no, it grabbed his ankle and he had a bruise on his ankle for like a week oh, afterwards. I remember that, it yeah. grabbed and clenched and like had death grip on his ankle. And he stood up and was like, we need to get out of here. At that point, you were just like, go. And I'm like, what? And you're like, go. <laughs> you literally pushed me. <laughs> and you are like yeah, yeah. the last one in line. You're like, raw. And I'm like, what are we running from? We like, don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Because I, I, I actually I, honestly didn't experience anything. I didn't see anything or anything. I, at that I, point, I was just like, yeah. I was like, we just need to get out of here. And I remember we were running through the tunnel. And God, I'm like, and you're, not just, you're just tunnel. yelling. Like, go, 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 go. And I'm like, what the? What's going on? And we get on the other side, and it's like all of us were like completely out of breath. You know, it's like totally winded, and it was like all the all the sensations were completely gone. And I remember I looked at you, I was like, "What the heck?" And you're like, "I don't know, I just need to get out of there." And I cannot believe yeah, you don't remember, remember this story. I don't remember the whole like I don't remember the tunnel part, but I remember everything else. That's oh so man, weird. I really don't remember the tunnel. But I just can't believe you don't because we used to use that tunnel all the time to get because we used to. Oh, it was a big tunnel. Yeah, it's it a wasn't long like tunnel. A, I'm thinking of like yeah, yeah no, 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 no. I know, I know what you're talking about. It now. went it was, under three fifteen. Like, yeah, yeah, it was a big. I mean, you could pretty much get a car yeah. in there. It was almost it was like, five was, feet tall. I mean, yeah, we pretty, probably couldn't get a car. I mean, we weren't like crouching. No, no, no. We were running. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. It went okay, under 315 okay. to get to the old and TNG yeah, pipe Yeah, path. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't like a long, big tunnel. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I was just about to say when you said the tunnel, I was just about to be like, I know what you're talking about. And then you said old and It was probably about 75 yards long or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Okay. Yeah, So. So you're just pretty drowned back there, right? I'm not surprised. Yeah. So... Okay, we can end on one more story. Okay. Then. But actually, it didn't happen to me. It happened to my other friend. But um, this, so, this is the last place I lived in, in Columbus. I was living in, um, on the, uh, off Harrison. It was a... Oh, you're living in Victorian Seth, Village. What? You're living in Victorian, yeah, Victorian so Village. Yeah, so Seth Holhouse and I were living together at this place. This was like the last place I was... One of the last places, I guess, I lived in before Bruce, I moved to uh, New York. Man of America. Yeah, Man of America. <laughs> Seth. So this is this... We lived in this beautiful home. I love this place. We had the oldest tree in the whole area in our backyard. It was such a... They have this amazing house really in amazing Victorian house. Village. So one of my friends was over and we were just having this really intense conversation talking about so many things and everything else and so um it was like 11 o'clock at night and she's getting ready to go and i had this thought that i just needed to kind of walk her out and um so i opened the door she leaves and well she shuts the door and i'm just holding the door handle for a long time and i'm like I need to walk her out, but I can't open the door. 
Like, I just couldn't get myself to open the door. I don't know how to describe it. It was like this weird feeling. Was she in the house with you? She just left. Okay. And I'm like, eh, I'm sure she's fine. And whatever, you know? So then I go upstairs in my bedroom and I look out the window and I just see her standing out there, like on the sidewalk for quite a long time. And I'm like, what is she doing? She's just kind of standing there. And then she goes in her car and I'm still watching her and everything. And then finally she turns on her car and then she just starts driving away. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So I don't think anything of it. And then all of a sudden she calls me and I'm like, okay. And so I answer the phone and she's like, Ben, you're not going to believe what just happened to me. I'm like, yeah, I saw you outside for a while. What, what happened? And now I didn't see this, but this is her experience. She's, and she's, I've been wanting her to tell her her story because we've had, oh my God, this is like, you know, we can get into so many ghost right. stories that we haven't even gotten. That's stories that I've never even told right. publicly. There's so many of these with her that we, we didn't even get into yet. But um, she said she, when she got outside, she just felt something was looking at her and she turned around and saw this being in, a tr in the tree. She said it was about four feet tall and it was glowing and it just had like dark eyes and it was staring at her she said actually it was like staring and in, like into our home into the house and she said it was watching us the whole time and then she didn't notice it until she went outside so she saw it and then she was just like she freaked out and it was looking at her they like locked eye contact and then she just thought um i'm going to uh i'm just she like She's like, so I stood there because she was like, I just closed my eyes and I was just like thinking like, I am protected. Like nothing's going to hurt me. Like God is protecting me. This thing can't affect me. And she opened her eyes and it was gone. And so she just like got in her car. Weird. And then she's just like kind of calmed herself down and she started her car and then she drove off and that's when she called me and I was like, Jeez. what the heck? And so, meanwhile, um, you're still in your house, yeah, Sam. Right. And I was like, it's out there. And I kept thinking, I was like, this is why I could not open the door. It was like, I think if I saw that, I just would have freaked out. I, I completely would have freaked out and lost it. So I think that was like stopping me from seeing this thing. And I 100% believe her because I'm like, God, we experienced so many crazy things that stories like, they're just so insane that I'm like, I don't even know if people will believe in this. Like everything I've told, uh, like from these, these stories are like, like everything I've told so far is like nothing compared to these stories. Well, I mean like, like yeah, dude, I don't know, hearing some of the stuff we've heard already. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's just like, you, you, you know, them. I, well, mean, I, mean, I told you these No, not just, I'm not talking about yours. I'm just talking about from other people. Oh, from other well, people. Like, just yeah. be on the show. Yeah, and yeah, just, yeah. Well, these I mean, stories like, I ever I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, totally we've, we've heard some of the already we're all we're not even that yeah. far into our show no. the stuff yeah. we've heard yeah is yeah. already like, i'm gonna be yeah. honest too like i've been like struggling the entire time we sing or talking about things ever since you told like the indian puppet story because i've just been i got this like intense deja vu feeling like to the point like my eyes are like watering now because i'm getting really much like an intense deja vu feeling from that story and it's like when i start to think about it like i don't know i can't explain it and i'm like i don't i don't recall ever seeing anything like that but like for some odd reason like it's giving me like some kind of just weird oh, intense feeling yeah. yeah that i just can't even describe i'm like i don't know why dude and i'm like, I'm like, I'm like, told like me i was almost, freaked out I'm like i almost feel like i was like i don't know i don't know like i'm like i don't know why i'm I don't like know why it's like i almost it i just like the more i think i was like But it's just, it's just giving me this weird thing. And I just like, I'm like, what? Like I, said, I didn't feel anything negative. It's no, not it's not. Story. It's, it's not. That's that the thing. I, I, I can't just, explain it. I don't know either. I no. can't explain it. It's a very odd feeling that yeah. it's giving yeah. me. A very it's odd. A very weird thing. Feeling. That's, it's not bad. It's just odd and I can't describe it. Yeah. Yeah. It is really weird. This yeah. whole thing has been really weird, but. Yeah, and I mean, I have a lot of good stories, too, that, you know, and I feel bad because we've been talking a lot of, like, dark things, but really, you know, I've had a lot of amazing, beautiful experiences, too, that, that I have shared some of these, um, right. you know, but um, we can save those all for another time because it's been getting late. Right. So, so um, this is the end of our interview with Ben. Um, if you or yourself have any stories that are familiar if you have experience with an Indian puppet, we'd love to hear from you. Or even if you just have something, <laughs> yeah. something that you have um, questions about, you're right. not sure what happened, 
and you just want to talk to somebody about right. it. Right. Uh, yeah. So you can always email us at info at the spooky door dot com or email Ben at whatever your email is. You can email us at on edge of wonder at gmail dot com. There you go. So yeah, <laughs> we also have help at edgeofwonder.nyc and I think info. Also, also there's the comment section, which all three of us will see. <laughs> Just right, that's true. That's, that's true. Just comment below. Just comment below. That's, below. Below. So that's, that's the like, easy out. It's like we get so many emails, that's why it's kind of hard. So if you comment below, we'll definitely see that. <laughs> it's best. Journey with us next time through the spooky door. Awesome.